What's up? Michelle here. And you might be coming to this video because you might be sat thinking, am I saying the right things to my loved one with depression? Am I doing the right things? And you've come to the right video because this is what this video is all about. So, you know, feel free to press that subscribe button and put the bell on so you will get notified the next time I upload because a lot of my videos are about this. Um, I am an author as well um, who's been through a lot. Um, I am nearly finished writing a memoir about how I survived many years of abuse, unfortunately, in the UK mental health system. If you are into reading, you know, stuff like that and finding out about what goes on, you know, feel free to download a 15-page preview and I'll put the link in the description. So yeah, hiya if you're new here. Um, you know, I hope that, you know, you can say hi in the comments. We've got a friendly bunch of people in this community. So yeah, depression. And the first thing I'm going to say, you know, with supporting someone with depression, is be authentic. Don't suddenly become something you're not. Don't feel like you need to mask your personality. Don't feel like you need to come out with all these things that aren't you, that isn't your true personality. You know? People with depression are first of all people, you know? And they deserve honesty, authenticity. Um, I have a father with severe depression and how I help him and support him is by love. I love him more than anything else in the world. And I also am always genuine and authentic. You know, being genuine goes a long way. Being Having an open conversation, it goes a hell of a long way. And the first thing is, is to encourage them to be authentic. In, you know, for example, you could say, you know, if you don't feel like cooking, you don't have to. You could, you could just get a takeaway, you know, and you might be like, oh, I'm fine. You can ask deeper, you can say, well, you know, it's fine if you're not. It's really, I understand if you're not. I understand if you're feeling shitty, and there's nothing wrong with that. That's an example. You know, a text you might send is, you know, I hope, you, I hope you're okay. I love you so much. If you're not, don't worry about it. Happy face. You know, stuff like that. You need to just take any ounce of pressure off. Because, I mean, I know for me personally, when I've suffered, you know, in the depths of depression, when I was in a really low place, you know, when I was, you know, really badly low, like suicidal low, the best thing that anybody could do for me was just be there in terms of, you know, I didn't want to hear, don't do it. Because to me, that came as like a, an attack. Um... All I needed was someone to text me, thinking of you. Um, oh, do you remember when we read that book and had a laugh? Or do you remember when we did that together? Like, you know, reminders of happier times. Reminders of the genuine connections that we have with other people. Knowing that someone else cares enough to go out of the way. However, you know, it is important to set boundaries as well. Um, I did make another video on boundaries. Um, you might be interested in that. I've put the link in the description to that as well. Um, because, I, you know, sometimes we can become ill, you know, by giving a little bit too much of ourselves. You know, for instance, um, not that long ago, I came across somebody who was really ill, unfortunately. And she was ringing me probably about four to five times a day, um... You know, she was saying she's suicidal, she needs help, etc, etc. And I was giving her advice, but it continued and I wanted my own space. I did say, you know, I do switch my phone off at a certain time, it's my time. Emailing me, you know, it was a bit much. And I had to tell her firmly, you know, these are the boundaries. And that's okay. There is nothing wrong with that. There's nothing wrong with having boundaries. And it doesn't make you any less of a daughter or a partner or a wife or a husband because you've set boundaries. It's actually good to set boundaries because you're saying you matter, but I matter as well. And I need to be in a good place myself to help you. Um, 
other examples of boundaries might be you know having really you know depressing conversations about i don't know funeral planning for example if you don't feel comfortable talking about it you could say look i really don't want to talk about it um it makes me uncomfortable or other stuff anything you don't feel comfortable you could be like that makes me uncomfortable and i don't want to talk about it or when you do that that makes me feel like this and that's fine to say that but yeah um it's important to understand that depression it won't go away for a long time sometimes it doesn't go away sometimes people live with it for the rest of their lives some people might have a you know it could be like a wave like you know like ride the wave there is going to be ups and then there's going to be downs and then there's going to be ups and then it's going to go like that like a mountain so expect the unexpected you know live for today and that's that's what i do with my father don't know how it's going to feel tomorrow but today is okay and i live for that i'm happy with every ounce of time that i get to spend with him you know um and that's kind of the mentality I, I suggest you adopt there is no use in saying right in five years time they're going to be over this because you don't know you know you can't really plan anything um and that's not really good for that person in terms of they could feel like that's a pressurizing business i mean the last thing i would want anybody to say to me if i was feeling low is right you know in six weeks time we're going on holiday right you need to do this you need to do that for example that would that would scare me and i'd be like oh you know i'd feel so much pressure um you know some people for example might be like right you know get out of you know just stop moping about and get a job and stuff and i really hate people that say that oh you know it's been six months why are you not over it or oh it's been a year you're still moping about you know that's cruel to say stuff like that because it's everyone's so different and one person's experience is just as valid as anyone else's something that might seem that small to you might be the worst thing ever for the next person and we have to be kind and we have to adapt and we have to be flexible with our approach and for me as someone that does have a lot of dealings with people going through depression i just view people as people you know and whether they're suffering inside or not i like everyone the same you know and i don't differentiate i don't suddenly treat anyone any different i encourage them though um what i do maybe a bit different is you know i might say look have you, have you eaten today for example I've, i did know somebody that used to not eat i used to suggest oh well have you tried this microwave meal or do you want me to pick some stuff up for you you know do you want me to get some tea bags toilet roll light bulbs you know stuff that runs out that you need or oh do you want some packet noodles because they're quick and easy you know when you're feeling a bit shitty you have to kind of normalize it um it isn't something taboo it isn't something that you shouldn't talk about people do feel shit people do struggle and that's fine honestly that is fine um because most people get over it and most people get stronger and write about it or do songs about it or go on to live you know you know it's up and down there's always going to be ups and downs and you know like i said you know you need to you just validate their experiences if, if they say oh you know i'm really not struggling i'm really struggling at the moment you have to listen and you have to be honest about listening as well if they're saying stuff like you know i'm really feeling suicidal or whatever you have to be like i said authentic you have to be realistic and authentic how i would react and how i have reacted in the past is well that's up to you i love you more than anything in the world but i would understand and that's enough and that's sometimes all you need to say because oh you better not go anywhere or don't do that or 
right that's it you know you must not do it that is pressurizing and the people with depression don't want to hear it it doesn't really like i said everyone's individual but when i heard that it didn't really make any difference i didn't care about people at that point i was ill i was suffering in my mind i was frantic um because you get these feelings of shame as well at one point i mean i'm a very clean individual i love washing i love showers i'm always in the shower but when I was really, really bad, I didn't wash and I didn't eat. And the last thing I needed was someone to say, right, you know, get dressed, get up now. Right, do this. You better not be doing that. You better, you know, you, you're you making me feel bad about myself. You know, you can't have that guilt tripping mentality. Uh, some people do go into it with like that. With, right, you know, you, you're making outside of the family, you know, look bad or oh, you're 28 and you're in bed, or oh, you're 40 and you're not doing this and you're not married. You need to drop that if you're doing that, because that is really not good. Um, it's not their fault, depressed. Depression's an illness. And we as a society have to look at it like an illness. We have to see it as that. Nobody chooses to be in pain. Nobody chooses to to feel low. Because out of the choice you would want to be live a happier life small gestures help and it isn't about over you know powering somebody with flowers every minute it could be literally sending texts saying i'm thinking of you or just to let you know that there's an offer on on tea bags the smallest things i do that you know my dad likes a certain brand of tea and if there's an offer i'll let him know if there's an offer on toilet roll, because he struggles to go out. So if I say, look, you know, there's an offer on toilet roll, that's a big thing, you know? You have to kind of live in their world a bit. You have to think how they would think. Um, And it can be hard to do. But that is the best way to support someone. Try and be in their shoes. Like, what would they want if I... What would I want if I was there? And then you'd, you'd... you have to have empathy and you have to care. You can't support someone if you don't have any patience. Because, again, then like I said, you need to have authenticity. This won't get better in a day. Or week. It might do, but it's unlikely. It's going to take a lot of patience and it's going to take genuine love and care. And if you don't have that, you know, the best thing you can do is be honest. Because don't set someone up to fail in this, you know, in saying, right, I'm going to be there, and then not being there. That's, that would be very detrimental. But like I said, encourage them to talk. Encourage them with the small little things, like, have you eaten today? You know, encourage them to do small things, like, have you washed? But then if they haven't, don't have a go at them, like, ah, it's all right to have an off day. You know, that kind of not bothered attitude actually helps more than, right, you're going to have to get in the shower now or else, you know. Um, Like I said, gratefulness. Time spent with someone you love is the most important thing. I want to be famous. I love fame. I like money. I like some material things. Like, I'm not a materialistic person, but, yeah, I like saving up i like collecting i like working hard and getting stuff but at the end of the day the thing that matters the most is your loved ones the ones who you love time isn't infinite and you have to just enjoy the now enjoy the time that you have um and that is the true way really the only way to support someone be there for them love them and be genuine and that's that's it you can't do any more than if you give your heart. But yeah, um, thank you for watching. I hope that this has helped in some way. Um, and yeah, subscribe and put those bells on if you want to hear more videos. Because, you know, this channel has evolved. It isn't literally just about mental health. I do talk about books. I talk about inspirational writers that have had struggles. I talk with people, you know, that may have had a mental health breakdown that have come out of it. This is an inspirational channel. I am an author. Um, so like I said, you can you can read more about me and what I've been through, which is pretty horrific. Trigger warning for that. 
um, in the description um, about my memoir, which is coming up shortly. Um, but yeah, thank you for watching, and I hope that this helped. Stay safe, stay grateful, and never give up. Never give up. It's been Michelle. Au revoir.